Good afternoon, and welcome to episode 750. Ooh, three quarters of the way to a thousand, for those doing math. Um, this episode is about equality in relationship, and I'll break that down more in, more in detail when I get into it. But before I do that, let me introduce myself and explain who I am, what I'm about. My name is Barry Selby, in case you haven't seen me before. I'm an inspirational speaker, uh, the best selling author, or should I say the author of the bestseller, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, and also a passionate champion for the divine feminine. And my focus, my work, and my joy is serving women to help them become more successful, more balanced, and more enjoy, enjoying of their life and their love. I was trying that out for the first time, so it's a little bit clunky, but getting where I'm going. And so every day for the last, well, for over two years now, I've done these talks called Messages from the Masculine, Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. And today we're at episode 750. And so the topic today is what is equality in relationship? Can it be done? How does it work? And what can you do to, to have that sort of kind of? So let's jump into this. What inspired this talk actually is a, it's an interesting post that I had on social media that evoked, triggered, generated some responses on both sides of the masculine and feminine divide. And it got me thinking about how do we talk, talk about this? Because one, I talked about what I've talked about myself in previous times. And in fact, a friend of mine posted a question on social media again, Facebook, asking for men about what we want men to know about what we're looking for, what we intend. And I talked about how what I'm looking for myself, and this is totally transparent, this is me asking here or looking for, is an equal partnership in a relationship, which seems to be an unusual question or an unusual request nowadays, because the wiring we still carry from generations before is relationship was not equal. It was out of balance in a lot of ways. The only way it was equal was in terms of the enmeshment and codependency, which is what marked a lot of the old relationships. And I'll explain that in a moment what that is or what it was. Where we come from in our hierarchy of relationships from our history, parents, grandparents, etc., our ancestry, so to speak, has been the man was the breadwinner and the woman was staying at home, taking care of the kids and the family. And the ancient paradigm that that sort of comes out of, which is what um, Addison Armstrong, one of my teachers, talks about, is the hunter-gatherer kind of mindset, where the man was the hunter, the woman was the gatherer protector. Now, back in the ancient times, there's an equality there because yes, the man was the hunter, but if he didn't deliver the goods, she could live without him because she was the gatherer of a lot of the produce, the foods, the things that would sustain them, especially if the man didn't succeed in his hunting, but also the protector, the protected the kids, the village, and protected everything. So even though the man was the hunter, you know, go and get, things, get the kill, make things happen, the woman was more fierce in the protection of the children, of the village, of each other. So in a lot of ways, the women were as powerful, if not more powerful, than the men. But then we went through a transitional period of a few hundred years, <laughs> more than that, in fact, where women basically started taking second place in some ways culturally because men started pushing towards the front in a patriarchal, stru patriarchal structure. Now, I'm not going to break down the whole societal dysfunction that we have. That's, a, that's for another topic entirely. But the result of that has been that women up until, well, 1960s were playing second place to men. And so men were running the show. And in fact, back before the 1960s, a lot of women didn't actually leave home until the man who married them took them out of the home. It wasn't until the 60s and the sexual revolution, the women's, revol the women's liberation movement as it was in England, where women started to find their way in the world where they could be independent. Up to that point, again, you know, men would actually court women who still live with their parents to invite them into marriage and then they would you know, take them out and meet them and then they'd marry them. So the women actually never lived on their own. Lived with their parents, lived in marriage, that was it. And of course, living in sin back then wasn't a given thing either. So it was very structured. So women basically weren't leading their own lives and had real clear ownership. They were having choice, but weren't in ownership. Fast forward to the post-sexual revolution era of the 60s, and women were, f in some ways, fighting for, especially with the feminist movement, their own space in the world. And so women started to find their way through by actually having their own bank accounts, because up until the 60s, women didn't have their own bank accounts very often. Having money coming in from a job that they actually took themselves, not just a secretarial job, but entrepreneurial, maybe in leadership, maybe in management, moving their way up the ladder and becoming more equal to men. But it was competitive. And so that's another piece I'll talk about in a moment. Also, they had their own apartments, their own cars. They didn't need a man to survive. In fact, they didn't need a man 
except for sex in some ways, because women had their own bank accounts, took care, took, took care of themselves, had their own transportation, had their own housing. All those things that men provided back in the old days were no longer relevant. So there was this shift that was almost going the other way for women because they were taking their own space in the world. Hi, Sue, nice to see my broadcast. Oh, sidebar. This is a Facebook Live in case you're wondering. I'm talking to people who are interacting with me live, watching the replay or watching it on YouTube later on. That's why I'm talking to people you can't see. <laughs> so back on track. So women basically had their own space and took up their own place in the world and were really leading a place of um, self-support and independence and didn't need men so much. So relationships and dating in the 80s and 90s changed quite dramatically. Say so back in the 50s, when men would court women from their homes where they were living with their parents. That's why they had to ask the father's permission because they were asking the, the father of the house and the mother if it's okay to take their daughter out for a date. That's fallen away because women generally don't live at home with their parents anymore, at least especially the ones who have been through a few experiences in life and had their own careers. So the dating arena shifted. It's also made it harder for men in some ways too, just to be transparent about it. So what I feel we're evolving into, or evolving out of, let's start with that part, we're evolving out of a very fiercely independent mindset where we're, where we're only coming together out of convenience rather than place of real joy and celebration. What we're moving into, I believe, is what I've termed, I've talked about this recently, as interdependence. Because basically the old paradigm in the beginning, and this stuff I talk about comes from Warrior Sage teachings from my friend Satyan, talks about the, we, the original model was a codependent model, a stage one relationship as he would use the languaging, where the old, where the man, woman was codependent on the man to get out of the house in a ways. Then we moved into the independent era, post-sexual revolution in the 70s and 80s and into the 90s, where women basically didn't need men. So it was a fiercely independent paradigm, and a lot of women got into their masculine and actually became combative with men, which is another talk I've done elsewhere. Then we're moving now into stage three, which is what we call interdependence. And again, I'm using this, this is what I learned from the, the Warrior Sage teachings from my friend Satyan, talking about how we grow into a place now where we are no longer needing each other. However, there are pieces of the puzzle that we add to each other to make us more whole, or to make us more unified. And this is where I talk about the equality piece. Because when we realize that men and women do not need each other, and the reality is we don't, especially in the modern era where families aren't so structured as they used to be, for men and women to come together in a relationship was a choice that they both made to in enter into that relationship. And the challenge is, even though it's an equal place, people aren't acting equal. And that's one of the disparities we have right now. There's a lot of men still walking around thinking they run the ship and they're in charge and they can get what they want and women basically have to bow at their knee type thing which is bullshit, but men are still doing that. And some women are falling into that trap thinking that's the way it works, which it doesn't in my book. Now, I may be speaking against the grain and upsetting some people by saying this, but truth be told, men are being bullish and think they're in charge because of one, partly because of one reason, is they're absolutely scared of being rejected. Men, and I'm one of them in this context, <laughs> aren't comfortable with being rejected by women. So for men being bullish and take charge and stuff, they act arrogant. So when a woman says no, they don't take it personally because they have a wall up to protect themselves. But ladies, just so you know, when you reject us, we feel it. Most men may act like they're independent, fiercely fine, everything's no problem, it's all good. But the truth is they hurt inside. So part of this is to recognize that we're no, we're one, it's not like one's invincible, one's not. We both have our places where we feel. Again, putting into the context of being equal in relationship. Equality in relationship is a very achievable and very attainable thing because what it comes down to is to honor our uniqueness, to honor our strengths equal each way, and to honor our differences. Because equal and different aren't the same thing because they're different. <laughs> but the truth is that men and women are very different. And this is the truth. But the thing is what has been happening is people think differences means unequal. And I'm saying no. We can be equal and respective of each other's choices, each other's differences, each other's ways of being, because that's what adds to the relationship. And when people think about equality, the, the flip side, no. The, the side of it that doesn't work is that people think, you have to take equal responsibilities, you've got to pay equal money and to pay the bills. You have to equal responsibility to take out the trash, equal this, that, and the other to do stuff. That's not what I'm talking about. Equality, I mean a relationship, is to have equal energetic input, equal responsibility for the relationship, and equal willingness to participate. And there are going to be certain things that aren't in balance, 
that aren't equal because some things are better by one partner than the other. There are relationships where the man is a better cook than the woman and he does all the cooking, he's a chef or something like that because he loves doing that and she doesn't want to do it or vice versa. So it's ba so basically that's the thing about, you know, in obvious things with household chores, you work out things that are trades. I'll take out the trash if you do this, I'll do this if you do that. That's all part of the negotiation. But it's not better or worse. And this is the trap that people fall into. Is they start to judge one thing is better than something else, so then they go, well, that's not equal anymore. Equality is a requirement in so many areas of life. When we talk about equality nowadays in, in, in a whole other context, but I'm speaking about, speaking about it in relationship specific, specifically. When we're in a relationship, to see our partners equal to us means that we don't use the other person. That's one of the things that happens in relationships. There's a bad habit people have, and I'm not saying men or women, because it can be both, use the other person for their needs in a way of like, I don't want to deal with that, you take care of that, I don't care. That's not equal, that's usury. And I'm not a fan of that, and I don't recommend it, but some people fall in the trap. And that's a piece about codependence back at the beginning I talked about. And I'm leaving, I'm leaving lots of threads in here because a lot of stuff ties to all the talks I've done. But I wanted to speak to this piece about equality because it came up a lot again in recent posts I've been watching and, and I've shared a few myself that have triggered some people. So this is a conversation to bring it back to a point of recognition that having an equal relationship is not only possible, but I suspect, I believe, it's almost like mandatory now. We are shifting in culturally speaking as I mentioned before, in the evolution from codependence to independence to interdependence, where we shifted out of the old paradigm into equality beyond the sexual revolution and the women's liberation movements, where women have now found their way, the next step, the next process we're moving into, excuse me, is in a place of equality, meaning that the way that we interact in business, in life, in love, becomes more equal meaning that you make space for each other too. Not so much that you do take up the space, but you also make space for the other person to step into so you can meet in the middle. Versus one taking up more space and pushing over the other side, or one person being too scared and pulling the other person over to them. Equality means you both participate. Equality means you both fully invest and involve yourself in the relationship. Equality means respect. And having that understanding will transform your relationship if you're willing to do that with your partner. Part of that is having honest communication with the person you're dating before you get into a relationship to discuss what framework you want to play in. How do you want to be together? And that's something I'll leave for you to figure out. I don't have an answer for that to say this is the script you should use. But to understand that is, key, is, key part of, is a key part of the work. Um, something I want to share, share again, as I mentioned at the beginning, is what I said on my fr to in response to my friend's post is I'm looking for an equal partner because I'm clear in my work where I'm going in the world there's a need, not need, a desire on my part, I'm just watching the lounging because there's something else I'm going to talk about in here. That's that piece. Okay, good. Just uh, check what it was. Is that I'm looking to be in partnership with someone where we can work together in the world to transform consciousness, to transform the culture, to transform relationships to be more amazing than they already are. A piece I just want to speak back to because it's something I talked about earlier or I touched into earlier is about this thing about codependence. One of those pieces of the codependence that we fall into is when you say to somebody, and this is one of the things on the post that I had on my, um, on my news feed earlier, is when you say to somebody, oh, you, um, I love it when you make me feel good. Like, you know, when a woman says that a man makes her feel sexy or a woman makes him feel sexy. Not true. Like, what? What do you mean not true? What I mean is that nobody can make you feel anything other than what you want to feel. You may choose to feel things in response to what they're doing or saying or feeling, but it's not something they can make you do. When you think that they're making you do stuff, you are becoming a codependent victim of their choices because if they do or don't do that, you feel or don't feel what you want. That's a waste of energy. The power you have to own your own space, the power you have to become more self-sufficient and the requirement for you to own your beingness in the world means that no longer do they make you do anything but what they do is they maybe you they may do something that you resonate with and feel more sexy because of what they did or said watch your languaging and listen to what you say to yourself because you may be finding yourself trapped into a place where you're actually defaulting your role and becoming codependent and that's not equal so for me i'm realizing as i'm saying this that equality and codependence have a lot 
have a lot of overlap, meaning that when you're in codependence, you're not in equality. Hang on, I'm just checking if that's true. I'm just running that through my, my own truth detector inside. That No, actually, that's not true. Okay, let me restate, let me restate that. Because codependence can be equal on both sides. <laughs> so there is an equality that way. But I'm speaking to is the highest quality of relationship, where the both partners step into their fullness is not in codependence. So it's a different way. Okay, just be clear on that. If you're, if you're finding yourself challenged by this stuff, maybe you find yourself defaulting toward patterns and your relationships aren't working out the way you want, or you're just finding that you want to learn about more about how to be more self-sufficient in a relationship that's not independent, but interdependent, then I invite you to reach out and talk to me. This is one of my specialities, as I talk about this quite a lot, as you may have guessed. And I do offer a discovery session as my first order of business. So I'll put a link in the comments so you can sign up for a discovery session with me. It's a complimentary clarity conversation, a triple C. That'll help you get where you want to go. Um, this is something that I invite you to think about and consider for yourself. You may discover for yourself where there's areas in your life where you're doing really well and there is where you could do better. If that's the case, focus on how you can do better to be fully amazing in your own life, in relationship, in life, in love, in all those areas. Because it really is the right place to be, is to have ownership and honoring of your own space, to be interdependent with other people and to be equal to anybody else you meet. That's a spiritual practice, I reckon. Um, there's one thing that I come in mind I was going to say. Part of this, yes, okay. Part of this discussion, part of this conversation, part of this messaging is really to, in service to women. As I mentioned in my introduction, I am a passionate champion of the divine feminine. And my work and my passion is becoming more blatant about this and more effective in waking people up. Because it's time more than ever that this world becomes honoring of women and feminine in a way that is balanced for both. That's when I'm talking about equality because it's not so much just about relationship only, it's about equality everywhere. And I'm standing up to say it's time. So that's my little soapbox moment at the end of my talk. Um, now back to, your, next back to your normal programming. I invite you to reach out if you have any questions, thoughts, please put them below, respond. You wanna to talk to me directly, reach over to social media. And again, I'll put a link in the comments so you can sign up for a discovery session if you wish to get to know me better and also to get to know you better. Um, with that, thank you for watching. I hope this has been provoking to you, thought, thought provocative, let me say that. Give me something to think about and hope it makes some sense to you. This is something I'm passionate about, as you may have guessed. And I hope this makes sense to you as well, that you can take it to your own life and use it. If you have questions, that's what I'm here for. I appreciate you being with me as always. I will see you again tomorrow, same time, same channel. Oh, by the way, jump ahead. This is my daily Facebook Live, as I mentioned. So we'll be here again tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific time. But where you can find my replays, if you haven't seen them before, is on my business page on Facebook, which is barryselbia.author. Please like my page and you can follow along when I do broadcasts there. Or I should say when I post the replays of my broadcast there. My personal page is where I do my live streams, which is here, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. But Barry Selby author is my business page on Facebook where the replays live. And also my YouTube channel, which you can subscribe to, is Barry Selby, as all my social media is. And there's a playlist in there called Messages from the Masculine where all of these get stored. So you can watch them anytime you want. Thank you, Sue. I appreciate the feedback. So with that, I thank you for watching once again. I will see you again tomorrow. Take care of yourself and think in your life where you can be less independent and less codependent and more interdependent so you can become more equal. There's a formula in there somewhere. I thank you for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow. Take care. Bye.